Game of Thrones, based on the novels written by George R. R. Martin, is the biggest TV show in the world today, broadcast in over 170 countries worldwide. On average, each episode is viewed by 15 million people. Many of us don't realise that HBO have been filming this hit show just a few hours up the road in Northern Ireland for nearly 10 years. You don't have to travel far to see why HBO chose this region as the perfect place to film Game of Thrones. From authentic medieval buildings to beautiful landscapes with far-reaching views, it is just the picture-perfect filming location. Home to more of the Seven Kingdoms locations than anywhere else in the world, it truly earns its title as Game of Thrones territory. The Dark Hedges is one of the most photographed phenomena in Northern Ireland and this amazing row of beech trees features as the King's Road in the HBO award-winning series Game of Thrones. There are currently a staggering 25 publicly accessible locations for visitors to explore and some of the dramatic scenery which forms the backdrop to much of the show's action can be found just two hours from Dublin in locations such as Ballantoy Harbour, Port Stewart Strand and Castle Ward in County Down. Fans can now easily visit many of the locations where a favourite scene was filmed or walk in the footsteps of a much loved character. There are a host of exciting experiences to enjoy and visitors can choose from a range of guided location tours and immerse themselves in Game of Thrones themed adventures. In this programme, I'll be exploring Northern Ireland's Game of Thrones territory. Join me on my adventure as the North awaits. We're here today in Castle Ward, which of course is one of the main locations for the filming of Game of Thrones Winterfell. And I'm delighted to meet William van der Kells. William, how are you doing? The Lord of Winterfell, I believe. You're true and right for Lord I, I am, of I am, I am honoured. Thank you, sir. And can you tell us a little bit, William, about what people can expect when they come here for this fantastic tour? Well, when they come here, first of all, they're going to get where Game of Thrones started. Our strapline is where GOT started. And the reason for that is that when the locations managers came here, they were able to take a look at this site. Uh, it is a beautiful site, 1,000 acres of land here, belongs to the National Trust, and it's known as Castle Ward after the Ward family. And this is now the setting for the Stark family home. This is where Ned Stark and his family are lined up and this place is known as Winterfell. So when they come here they get exactly that. Now not only that, so as they get 17 location sites which they can actually see around. Um, they can you go walking, they can go on bicycles, um, they can even come and do the archery. We're the only immersive and interactive site there is in Europe for Game of Thrones. And so people can come along here and they can get really drawn into the whole programme. The fact is they can actually dress up in costumes as well. We have Brilliant. proper HBO costumes here so we will get the authenticity of that and they'll be able to walk around so as, as a Stark family member and the thing that always gets me as well is that immediately some of them will say oh no it's okay it's fine but as soon as they get them on all of a sudden they're like this you know and there they are they've immersed themselves already when they get doing the archery they suddenly realize just how difficult that archery is but also so as how fun it can be as well and then they get out to see this beautiful estate and they'll see 17 location sites they will be able to go on bikes and, and walk and they'll be able to immerse themselves in those areas we give them what we call a stark sack okay a stark sack is basically a rustic rucksack and in there you'll get a couple of cloaks a couple of swords you can do your own selfies make your own movies whatever in a lot of all these sites as well so William, if you pardon the pun, we're going to go off now and add another string to my bow at the archery range. <laughs> and let's catch some dinner. Very good, I'm getting hungry. I could, I could do with some venison Brilliant, right now, yeah. brilliant. <laughs> So Ed, the final piece of the jigsaw here wow. is the cloak. 
Okay, now this goes on a particular way. This will go over your shoulder. So if mm. you'd like to turn around there, please. Yeah. Okay, from there over that shoulder. Great stuff. Last strap over that shoulder. Any time you the edge. Should never turn your back in it. <laughs> So wow. these are the choice of swords that we can have here. So the Rob's King of the North, John Stone's Longclaw, and Brianne's Oathkeeper. It's a bit like Excalibur. I can feel the I can oh, feel this one calling me. Yeah, it's calling me here. Absolutely. Indeed, yeah. You know, you need to be skilled oh. to use that one, sir. Yeah, okay. I'll do uh, lots of practice. <laughs> one of the things I do show people here is the fact is that they have some of the chain mail that they would use. So that basically goes over your head like this. Well, that would protect you in this particular fashion. But I just want to give you an idea here. Uh, hold that for me, please. Wow. Gee, was that heavy. So you can huh? imagine some people wore this, not just across the neck, but down mm. their arms, maybe even a vest made out of it, and sometimes down their thighs. You probably weighed about another 30 pounds more when you put your steel sword, you've got your chain mail on. You Amazing. You even have a helmet. I mean, look at this thing. Just like that. And over your head. Perfect. Wow. Now, big improvement. Pretty vicious. Big improvement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to go now. What we're going to do now is some archery. Archery was very, very important skills that the Stark family had to know about. First of all, you had to be able to hunt for your food. Okay, there were no supermarkets <laughs> yeah. that were open in those days. Okay, so you had to hunt for your food. So wild boar, deer, venison, all that stuff would have been available to you. So you needed to have the skills to do that. We're going to go out to see if you have the skills to uh, do that in the first place, to hunt for your food. Then also you needed it for fighting. Remember, sometimes it was a good thing to get your arrows sent off forth before the enemy got anywhere near you. Yeah. And sometimes these arrows would actually travel 100 meters. Wow. Okay, so length of a football field, not a problem. Okay, Ed. Great just stuff, William. way through the door there, we'll get out and do some archery. Terrific. So William, this is basically the whole experience, the Winterfell experience. So it starts off when people come up with the archery, is that right? Yeah, well one of the things that we do here, Ed, is what we call a Ned session. Okay, Ned Stark was very strict about making sure that all his cohorts were able to shoot some arrows here. The reason being you need to be able to hunt for your food, but you also had to defend your castle. So what we're going to do now is uh, do some archery. We're going to do it in the exact spot that Jon Snow, Rob Stark and young Bran were doing the practicing. Now, what you're going to do is turn the bow upright, and that red finger tab is where your three fingers so it's off your first knuckle and actually grab hold. So just okay. three fingers there. So out towards your, your target, mm -hmm. going to the center one. Okay. Keep your hips nice and square. And yep. you to draw basically your arm back. Mm hmm. So, left arm needs to go out straight first. Yep. Okay, and draw your arm back. Keep the left arm straight. Keep coming, keep coming. Bring your elbow up a little bit, mm -hmm. pull again, even further, further back, don't be afraid of it, and loose, let go, see what happens, okay. Wow. So um, unfortunately I didn't um, quite make the grade today, so I've got to stay in the stocks here for a while, but uh, hopefully I'll be let out soon so uh, we can continue with the programme. Yes, this is uh, in reality Audley's castle, it's mm. a 15th century castle, but all that's left now is the keep. The barn out here would have been higher walls in here as well as a promontory fort overlooking the rest of the Irish Sea and, and uh, Strangford Lock itself. But this was the iconic scene for the Red Wedding. Mm. And that Red Wedding was actual factual history brought to bear here where one clan in Scotland invited another to a banquet and slaughtered them all. And this is where um, Arya and the Hound would be coming along, Arya's first time coming back to try and meet up with her family. Unfortunately, the Red Wedding takes place here. Rob, Catelyn, so is Talisa, are all killed at this place with the uh, nasty Walder Frey, who basically tried to get Rob to marry one of his ugly daughters. And uh, it's actually not that ugly at all. Edmure gets her eventually. Yeah. Her Tully. But um, this is that ex actual spot where that fighting took place. Brilliant. And the Stark family were more or less wiped out at that point. Uh, but no one else knew because most of the Stark family were away somewhere else. Now I'm off to meet the stars of the show, the direwolves Thor and Odin, who played Summer and Greywind in the series, and their owner, William Mulhall. So William, lovely to meet you. You're the owner of these beautiful dogs. Yes, yes. Can you tell us, was it difficult to train them for the programme? Well, actually, um, they're a highly intelligent dog, naturally, so it was quite easy for them to be trained, and especially when they were trained by the best dog trainers in the world, that would help. They were trained by the same people who trained all the dogs used in Harry Potter. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the same person who trained them, uh, Hagrid's dog, Fang and all that. And they also trained the same dogs used in Marley and also they trained Black and Black. Okay, so you can see in front here now, Ed, this is uh, an area where they use for the battlefields. Classic area, large fields, a little bit of scrub gorse in the middle of it all. And this is actually the scene of the Lannister camp. However, this field was also used for other things, like Baylor's battlefield, okay, as well, uh, where the Horn men came out to, to help. And again, that's what it's like eventually when the CGI comes in. Uh, but you can find little Tyrion out there in the middle of it all. <laughs> so this actually happened in this particular field here. So this field was used for the Battle of the Five Kings, River Runs, was the Baylor's Battlefield, the Lannister Camp and so on, and then Rob's Camp where we were just recently there at Orly's Castle. Next stop is Tollymore Forest at the foot of the beautiful mountains of Morne. Established in 1955, Tollymore was the first state forest park in Northern Ireland, covering an area of 1,600 acres. This romantic forest is home to trees, woodlands, streams, grottos and caves, and offers scenic walking trails along the banks and bridges of the Shimna River. This was the location used for filming the scenes in Season 1, Episode 1, Winter is Coming. Ned Stark, his sons Rob, Bran and Jon Snow, along with Theon Greyjoy, are returning from Will's execution when they find a dead stag which has gored a female direwolf. The direwolf is the symbol of House Stark and it was here that Ned Stark took the direwolf pups back to Winterfell to gift to each of the Stark children. The Cistercian Inch Abbey, founded in 1180 by John de Courcy, was used as Rob Stark's camp at Riveron in episode 10, season one, Fire and Blood, where Rob learns that his father has been executed at King's Landing. The War of the Five Kings has begun. So here in the Cuan, you'll find the first of the 10 doors which are made from the fallen beech trees from the dark hedges. And these reflect all the different stories from the episodes from Game of Thrones in season six. Every time you come to one of the doors, you get your passport, you get your passport stamped, and you keep that to show that you visited all 10 locations. When some trees from the dark hedges blew over in Storm Gertrude, Tourism Northern Ireland and Tourism Ireland carved the felled wood into a set of 10 intricate doors, thus saving history for the fans. The Coon was the cast's choice for accommodation while filming season one and two. That evening, I feasted on the hearty King's Banquet in full northern Westerosi garb, echoing Robert Baratheon when he came north to ask Ned Stark to become Hand of the King. Game of Thrones has been phenomenal for Northern Ireland's tourism industry. I'm taking the King's Road south to Belfast to meet McComb's Game of Thrones tours and to speak to the owner, Caroline, about their personal success story. Your Game of Thrones tour has been given a five-star rating, no less, by Tours of Northern Ireland. Can you tell us a little bit about what's included on the tour? Absolutely. It is a day bursting at the seams with Game of Thrones locations and Game of Thrones facts and spoilers and just really a brilliant day out for all Game of Thrones fans and non-fans too really. So we leave Belfast in the morning and we travel the full beautiful Causeway coastal route. We have visits at the caves of Push and Dunn. We go along the coast right up to Ballantoy Harbour. We visit the famous dark hedges and you really couldn't have a visit to that area without stopping at the Giant's Causeway and Cargary Road Bridge as well. So it's a day jam-packed for Game of Thrones fans and non Game of Thrones fans too. Now Carla, you were telling me earlier that it only took 20 years for you to be an overnight success. 20 years for us to become an overnight success, yes. People who had never heard of us before, who all of a sudden heard the great things that we were doing with these Game of Thrones locations and all of a sudden everybody knew who we were then. So it has been a real catalyst for us and really helped us move our business on to the next level. So yeah, it's really, we couldn't put into words how great Game of Thrones has been for our business.
After my tour, I weaved my way to Belfast to the Ulster Museum's Game of Thrones tapestry, a 77 metre long hand embroidered tapestry which narrates the highlights of the Game of Thrones story to date and will continue to do so as the series continues. Departing Belfast, I head north along the Causeway Coast to the Ballygally Castle Hotel, which was positioned at the start of the scenic Antrim coast, near the foot of the famous Nine Lens of Antrim. Door 9 is located here, with symbols of both House Stark and House Bolton, the battle-scarred face of the Stark direwolf dominating over the flayed man suggests a house dark victory, but at a very heavy cost. Well, I've just had a fabulous Game of Thrones afternoon tea here in the lovely Valley Valley Castle on the Antrim coast, and I'm going to be heading off to meet Flip to see the famous Cushion Caves. Oh, and don't forget to get your passport stamped. En route to Cushenden, I come across the wild landscape of Cairn Castle. This was the filming location for The Neck on the road to Moat Caelan in Season 5, Episode 3. Sansa Stark with Lord Baelish leaves the Vale and arrives at Moat Caelan where she learns that Littlefinger plans to marry her off to the sadistic Ramsay Bolton. Stunning destination here, Flip, in Cushenden and these famous caves, of course, which are over 400 million years old. Yeah. So can you tell us about um, what people do when they come up on your tours? Sure, yeah, I bring small group tours. Uh, we go to the, sort of the busy sites, if you like, but then I'm able to get people off the beaten track in a smaller van and to places that other tourists cannot reach. But we definitely bring them here. This is an extremely famous where Melisandre gave birth to the shadow demon, or the, the assassin, if you like. Uh, and there's sort of the horror of, uh, of Davos. He was sort of, sort of shocked at what we were witnessing at that, that, you know, that particular night, but that was just in the cave there. A quick stop in Mary McBride's bar in Cushenden to see door number eight, which chronicles Aya Stark's journey in the free city of Bravos. The scenic coastal road takes us to Murloc Bay on the Antrim coast, the location of Slaver's Bay in Essos, where Tyrion Lannister and Ser Jorah land after being attacked by the stone men on the old Valerian Canal. The best views of Westeros are of course commanded by dragons, but my Game of Thrones air tour adventure wasn't far behind, providing me with breathtaking aerial views of the Dothraki grasslands, Dragonstone and the coast of Dorne, all located at Binavena, Downhill Beach and Port Stewart Strand. Downhill Beach is a magnificent seven mile stretch of sand and surf offering a wealth of activities. Above the beach, the prominent Mussenden Temple is one of the most photographed buildings in Northern Ireland and offers breathtaking views of the north coast to the counties of Derry, Donegal and Antrim. Below me, Binavena on the Antrim Plateau was the shooting location for the Dothraki grasslands. Fleeing from the sons of the Harpy in the fighting pits of Marine, Daenerys Targaryen was rescued by her dragon Drogon and brought to his lair north of the city in the Dothraki grasslands on the continent of Essos. Wounded and needing sleep, Drogon ignores Daenerys' pleas to take her back to Marine. While searching for food, she is spotted and surrounded by a Dothraki horde. Well, that was an amazing dragon's eye view of the North Antrim coast. I must say, I can really recommend Cutting Edge Helicopters Tour. An amazing opportunity to get scenic shots of Northern Ireland's sweeping Causeway Coast and a must-do for any Game of Thrones fans. And from the air to the sea, I'm off now to meet Richard, who I'm told is an aquaholic. Hey Richard, how are you? I'm brilliant, man. How are you? Very good, very good. Listen, I've never been on a sea safari before, so I'm really excited about this. Are we, <laughs> are we ready to go? And listen, what a great day. Yeah, 
we leave Ballet Castle on these fast boats and we're covering a lot of the scenes that we used in the Game of Thrones, both the blue screens, the backgrounds and actual scenes where they've been filmed on. And we've been involved a lot with writing and writing support as well in the Game of Thrones site, so we know quite a bit of what's actually happened and what, what scenes were, seen, uh, were filmed and where rocks were used and what cliffs were used as backdrops. It's fantastic. What are, all the what, what are all the locations that you get to see? Well, we'll go and visit Ballantoy, which is Ironlands, and we'll go around to Murdoch Bay, a few scenes were filmed there. Also, we have a fantastic fair head behind us, which is amazing to look at even without Game of Thrones. Uh, having the film movie series, some series 3 and also some series 7 here as well. Uh, we also use the, the cliffs at uh, Larry Van, uh, and also in that tour we include uh, Carrie Green Road Bridge and other sites that you can see on the north coast. And the other advantage is, of course, sometimes we have dolphins, uh, Mickey wheels, bass and sharks come up alongside the boat as well. We've just arrived at the Stormlands Larry Bain which was used in the filming of season three, episode two. And this was the filming location for Renly Baratheon's Stormlands. So I've just landed in Ballantoy Harbour, which has been used in several scenes for the filming of Game of Thrones. First of all, it was used in season two as Lordsport Harbour on Pike Island when Theon Greyjoy returned home. And it was used again in season four for Dragonstone. So this is a big location on the Game of Thrones as you know. To help you navigate your way around Northern Ireland to the 10 doors and the accessible filming locations from the show, download the free Game of Thrones Filming Locations Northern Ireland app available for Apple and Android. It is so easy to explore the worlds of Westeros or Winterfell. Just hop in the car on your very own road trip, taking in the scenic Causeway coastal route or the Mourn regions of County Down. Whether you're a Targaryen or a Lannister, or not a fan at all, I promise you that you'll be enchanted by this magical land that is Northern Ireland. Let's just hope that Khaleesi's dragons aren't too hungry when you take the King's Road.